It's 2020. Your phone tracks your location. Your search history is sold on secret markets. Your digital purchases can be tracked and traced back to you. But there's still nothing quite like facial recognition. Facial recognition doesn't need you to download an app or to buy something for it to know who you are. With few laws on the books, powerful facial recognition software is being used at airports, in police departments, in schools. You notice there's no matches, so you're not in our system. But that's good, we don't have to worry about you. You might not see it, but it sees you. Welcome to the world of facial recognition. Facial recognition isn't exactly new. You can actually find early versions of it going all the way back to the 1960s. Woodrow Wilson Bledsoe developed a groundbreaking way to measure different points in a person's face. And for years and decades, it slowly developed, but it was handicapped by technical limitations that left it a niche and barely functional technology that mostly existed in the realm of science fiction and consciousness. Well, hello, Harry. But all that's changed. Now facial recognition is a multi-billion dollar industry. Amazon recognition. It's using the ability to track as a selling point, pushing the ability to increase security in public places. So here's what's new. First is just how fast facial recognition has become. Facial recognition takes a lot of computing power, not just to analyze a face, but first to just determine what is a face. And for years, it was only really possible to analyze existing recorded images. But over the last decade, transformations in computing power and AI have enabled facial recognition technology to work in real time. London Police are set to roll out live facial recognition technology across the city. The technology issues an image to a handheld device that the police officers will have, and they will make a decision whether or not to engage with that person to try and ascertain, is it the person that we want to speak to? Now we've only really just seen the beginning of how real-time facial recognition will be used, but the technology is ready. The next thing that's changed with facial recognition are the sizes of the databases. Now when you look at facial recognition, this is the single most important variable. Facial recognition works by analyzing a face and breaking it down into unique identifiers and then comparing those unique IDs to a database of already mapped faces. So how many faces and which faces are in that database are what gives a facial recognition system its real power. Privacy advocates have been cautioning in recent years that the size of the databases are growing. The ACLU has said that the FBI's database has expanded to 640 million photos, including driver's license photos from 21 states. But a new report in the New York Times in January of 2020 shined a light on a stunning milestone. Clearview AI, which was a previously unknown company, has claimed to have scraped 3 billion photos from social media sites. So with every year, those databases are growing larger and larger. And now with Clearview AI, we've seen what could be the largest facial recognition database in the world. But the technology behind facial recognition isn't all that's changed. For the first time, there's been a legislative pushback against facial recognition. It's just in a historic vote in San Francisco. The Board of Supervisors has just approved a ban barring police and other city agencies from using facial recognition technology. And in Congress, there's a surprisingly bipartisan group of legislators who have floated federal limits on facial recognition technology. And so that's why we gotta put some guardrails around things like this. They can otherwise tell a whole lot about you. It's none of their darn business. There's no question. Facial recognition technology has improved exponentially over the last few years. And defenders of the technology say that that's a good thing, that it will enable law enforcement to protect citizens in these unprecedented ways. The FBI tracked down 61-year-old Charles Holland at a Walmart store in Salem, Oregon on Tuesday. The FBI used a newer facial recognition technology. But privacy advocates are concerned. On one hand, they worry that the technology doesn't work well enough. Studies have shown that certain facial recognition systems have misidentified people of color at a higher rate. And then there are concerns that it works too well. That if this technology that can identify anyone instantly is in the hands of businesses and governments, what does that mean for us as a society? So right now, it's not a question of when facial recognition technology will arrive. Now it's a question of who gets to use it and whose faces are they looking at.